Welcome to Live Live! Woo. My thoughts changed a lot. I want to be a veterinarian and a mom. I want to be a writer and a mom. I want to be a doctor and a mom. The one thing that was constant was from the time I was about three or four years old, I always knew I wanted to have six or seven kids. And I feel I was very blessed because I did give birth to six kids, four boys, two girls. I've had two stepsons, and I've had countless what I call my other children, kids mostly that I've met through Lifeline that have become part of my life, that call me mom, that have called me at times in the middle of the night with problems that have stayed at our house because they were in situations that they needed parents and they, they weren't getting what they needed at home. So Randy and I kind of tried our best to fill that void. So I feel like I've been blessed in being a mother many, many, many times over. If I had my way and if I had better health, I'd adopt half a dozen more. Randy's probably glaring at me for that right now. Um, but one thing about motherhood, you're never really prepared for. I mean, when, when you're pregnant and you're, you kind of have this list in your head, what you think it's going to be like to be a mom, you prepare the best you can. You run through your mind what you're going to be like, you know, how you're going to act. The things that your parents said to you that you're never going to say to your kids, you're, you're going to say them. You're going to hear your own mother coming out of your mouth at some point. And it's going to shock you, and then you're going to realize, you know, maybe my mom wasn't that bad. But nothing prepares you for that moment when you give birth, and they hand you this slimy, bloody, wriggling, sometimes squishy-headed, funny-looking thing, and you fall in love at first sight. There's no feeling like it in the world. Um, scientists, they, you know, like to dissect everything, and they'll say, because at the moment of birth, your body produces this huge amount of oxytocin. They call it the love hormone. Oxytocin is great. You know, it may explain part of it, but I believe that was given to us for an important reason. Well, I think it was given to us so we don't eat our young, like a lot of animals do. <laughs> And as Jenny pointed out, you get that feeling too, even if you are not the birth mother. There's just something about motherhood that you can't explain. And I'm sure fathers have their own feelings. It may be very similar. I don't know. I'm not a man. Never been a father. But I can tell you as a mother, you just love that child more than anything. Um... I'm a very kind of practical kind of person, and I believe that parents, especially mothers, have two primary roles in raising their children. The first is to do everything in your power to help your child survive till adulthood, no matter how hard teenagers make that. The second is to teach your children the skills they need to survive and to get by when they're adults. There are a lot of different ways we do those things. We help our kids to survive by trying to keep them healthy. We feed them, sometimes every two hours through the night. We take them to doctors, we get them their immunizations so they don't catch a disease that might kill them or disable them. We take them to the doctors when they're sick. We make sure they're in their car seats or strap into seat belts. We tell them don't run with scissors. You know, we do all these things to try to keep our kids safe. Probably nine times out of ten, your kids are just fine. They grow up safely, healthy, and they get out on their own. Well, we've had to teach them a lot of other things. We've given them chores as they're growing, or hopefully all parents are giving their kids chores. You know, we have to teach them how to do dishes. We have to teach them to separate the reds from the whites and the delicates from the jeans. We have to teach them how to cook basic foods, how to drive a car, how to balance a checkbook, how to change a tire, you know, there are so many skills that you need as a grown-up that you don't get from school, you don't get from the friends you hang out with, you get from your mom and your dad. Hopefully you get from your mom and your dad. 
we do all these things. We cook, we clean the house, we keep everything spotless, we stay up all night if we have to, and we never complain once, right? <laughs> right. In a perfect world and with a perfect mom, and I think the perfect mom only existed in like sitcoms from the 1950s. And the only reason she was perfect back then was there was a team of male writers who wrote the woman they wish they had. Um, we're human. You know, on Mother's Day, everybody wants to glorify their mom. Realistically, every mom out there has screwed up. I was screwed up. I can tell you countless times that I lost my temper, or I said the wrong thing to my kids, or embarrassed them in front of their friends, or didn't make them check their homework and they flunked a class, whatever. You know, moms mess up. Your mom probably messed up quite a few times too, and some of us may have some resentment towards her. Our babies did not come with a handbook and an owner's manual. They didn't come with a guideline that said, this is your child's personality. You know, you might luck out and get children who are all easygoing and never question anything, and yes, ma'am, no, sir. Or you might get that strong-willed kid that from day one is just defiant and hard to deal with. Either way, you know, you're winging it. You're trying to figure out day by day, situation by situation, how to deal with this child. And it's hard. Um, another thing, one thing that's really, really hard to do sometimes is to forgive yourself when you do make those mistakes. It's kind of like, you know, forgiveness is something that, that is talked about a lot in church. I don't know the magic answer. I don't think any preacher knows the magic answer. It's something that you have to do for yourself. But I wanted to just kind of point out that on Mother's Day, you know, a lot of people, they rush out and they buy the flowers or something like that. And that's lovely. You know, it's a nice sentiment. As a mom, I want to tell you what I think most moms really, really want for Mother's Day. We want to know that we did okay. We want to know that you forgive us for anything that we might have screwed up when you were growing up, that you understand that we're human and we're not perfect and we made mistakes. We want to know that our children are going to be okay in life, that they they make mistakes, but they're going to make good decisions. They're going to go on and be fine. And we want to know that you all, that our children know more than anything how much we love them. Because I think that's the thing about moms. We love our children fiercely. And we're supposed to. You know, people talk about being a mama bear that will defend their child against the whole world if need be. That's what moms do. Um, so if you really want to do something special for your mom, not just on Mother's Day, but any day, just let her know that you love her, that you appreciate her, that you understand that you didn't necessarily make life easy for her, but that you think she did the best she could, given the fact that she didn't know what the heck she was doing with you. None of us really do. Um, and when you're raising your own kids, forgive yourself if you make mistakes, because you will. Try to be patient when they wake you up every hour, every two hours at night. Try to be patient. It's hard. You'll be exhausted. But it's so worth it because they know when they cry and you come and take care of them, you are teaching them to trust. You are teaching them that somebody loves them unconditionally, no matter how frustrated you are. Save those every year from school when they bring home those little painted handprints showing the size of their hands. Save them. Stick them in a drawer some, somewhere and hang on to them because someday you're going to pull them out. 
and they're going to mean the world to you. But mostly just remember you're not in this alone. If you need help, if you're feeling overwhelmed, if you need a nap and your mom or your sister or your best friend or somebody is around, it's okay to call them up and say, hey, can you watch my child for a couple hours? I need some rest. And accept help if someone offers it. I'm not talking about that stranger in Walmart who walks up to you and says, you shouldn't let your kid do that. They don't, you know, I, I know their intentions are good, but pay attention to the people who love you and who know you and know your child. Because they're not going to tell you something just to give you a hard time or to criticize you. They're genuinely trying to help. And it's okay to accept help. And don't eat your young, okay? <laughs> Happy Mother's Day.